Welcome to Stampscaping 101. This is a pre-recorded video, but I'm going to finish off this piece in a live stream. I just have to go and spray seal this once or twice, and I didn't want to have to do that during a live stream, you know. Go do something for five minutes and I'll be back type of thing. All right, so we have that very, very loud holographic cardstock here. It's not a printable vinyl, so it's something that you're definitely going to want to utilize with um you know compatible media okay so things that will adhere to this well not maybe adhere but um dry on it and that's a big thing with um metallic uh very low porous um, types of card stocks if you try something like a water-based uh, media on here like a dye-based ink uh, you know you won't even be able to see it for one thing but you, it'll probably be easily wipe off. Okay, a water-based pigment ink in the form of brilliance, it'll dry on here, but we're gonna have to spray seal it and things like um, stays on. Solvent inks will dry and adhere to this, okay? So I think it's going to be a combination of both brilliance and the stays on on here. Now, whether or not we can use other types of media on here um, and utilize it with spray sealing. I did, that still is kind of um, up in the air for me um, because I haven't experimented around with this enough. Okay, so that being said, what I want to do is I want to use something that, oh, I don't know, it would be kind of an unconventional, it's already an unconventional surface to stamp on, but if you're stamping on something like this, you have all this high contrast and really super vivid um, patterning on here, where something like open stamps, um, areas that are uh, open on the inside, in other words, non uh, silhouette styles of stamps or areas within designs that are non um, silhouette, just solid black or something like that, you can't really use that on here because all of that is just going to show right through here, right? Um, so we have to block it out. So I'm going to try on this piece doing something with this Autumn series and we'll have some other foreground elements down here. And yeah, we're going to be um, covering up a lot of what makes this paper uh, what it is and very dynamic but it's also going to make it very usable if it works, okay? And especially if we can spray seal it and apply other colors within this space right here. That's the whole, my whole point of uh, using the autumn um, types of imagery with this. Okay, let me get my bearings right here. All right, I'm going to put my little greasy fingerprint right there just so I, I know the horizon right here. So. I'm going to have some white going through these trees so that um, the trees will be white and not the patterning of this paper. So it'll be roughly like this. Okay, the, again, this is stays on white, okay? I might need to re-ink this as well. And then we'll, we'll have some clouds coming up this way and below. So I need to get my bearings as far as how high to make this, so I'll need to go a little bit beyond where my fingerprints are. All right, looks like we, we're gonna need a lot more ink for this. If you like these videos, please hit the like button, comment, subscribe, hit the notifications. It helps the channel out. Uh, it's very uh, small channel but it would be nice to get a few more views on them just to help pick up some additional supplies. I want to buy more of these types of papers to uh, experiment around with. And uh, a subscription, a free subscription to this channel would be great. Okay, so adding this down, all right, so see what I'm doing right here? I'm blocking out that background in there. You can still see that patterning right through it, but it'll block off some of it, okay? And that's what I call blocking out. It's, it's, it's kind of anchoring down that background in a way. Um, it's, I always say taming the uh, 
surface a little bit. And that's when um, something is just so dynamic that it tends to swallow up anything that you stamp over the front of it, okay? So this really helps with this type of um, paper. Now, I'm going to stamp over it in uh, the center area so you don't have to uh, get it applied super smooth, okay? Um, yeah, I wouldn't even say the smoother the better or anything like that, okay? But now, that's in the center area, but you see these transition zones right up here where it just goes into the paper and then into that blockout area? Now these areas are going to represent clouds. So I'm going to use kind of a more delicate touch up here. And by delicate, it doesn't mean you have to be like really light handed or, you know, something like that. You can just use a drier applicator. So instead of inking up right here and then going right in here and getting it a little bit blobby, potentially, you just use the drier version of it and you can be as heavy handed as you want, really, because it's not going to be applying very much media. Um, when it's dry. Okay, so see this right here? So this is the secret to this type of blending right here and transitioning. It's just using the drier version. I've been using it multiple times. A lot of nice people aren't comfortable with that, so they really feel the inclination to go back in here and ink up when they're barely applying any of that media. But in this case, you want to do that because you're applying a very thin layer and getting it from thick to thin up here. Let me show you what I'm doing right here. So There we go. Um, thicker layer down here, whiter, and thinner layer up here, more transparent. You can see it uh, right in that patterning right there. Okay, now this is just one layer. We're going to be doing, well, it depends how loud it is. <laughs> we might have to do a few layers in here, okay? Going back down here. And I'm going to transition down here a bit too. So let me get my bearings right here and let's see how that design is going to look, and it looks like it'll fit right in that space because I have the white going right here, and then uh, a little bit above it, maybe an inch, maybe at this tallest point, maybe uh, an, an, a very thin inch above it, okay? Application of white in terms of th uh, thick or thin, okay? Uh... I hope this works, you know, I mean, it's, it's, this is an experiment. We're in the, uh, our, uh, stamping laboratory here. All right. Uh, the biggest thing is, is how is it going to look? I, I want to apply, be able to apply alcohol inks into those trees to give it a really good, um, Kind of autumn uh, color. All right, inking, re-inking my brilliance white is really helping out here. Sometimes when you can start going on to um, these types of papers um, with a medium like this that's not adhering, uh, if you tap too hard, you're going to be removing ink off the surface. Okay, so um, just get get a feel for it and uh, adjust your pressure as needed or if needed. Okay. All right. So let's see. This is going like this. This will be right here. And this will be over here again. Okay. So uh, let's do, I'm going to do this thing that I did in this other scene called, uh, you know, whatever, Memories of Maine or something like that. And I'm going to put this ledge right over here so it's like we're kind of walking um, on this area above the lake or pond. And why don't we give it a bit of an angle like this? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make this area foreground a little bit more prominent here. Maybe I'll build this up a little bit higher like this. So again, it's blocking out, okay? Let's make this a little bit more um, irregular in terms of my application of white here. Let's make it a little bit thicker in some areas, okay? 
just so that the um, the rock that I stamp on here will look like it's illuminated a little bit differently um, once stamped in there. And just variation, just for on our lighting sake. You see this up here, how it's kind of lighter in some areas, and it's, you know, it's, it's very blotchy looking, okay? Um, uh, don't worry about that. That's, I wouldn't say it's the point of it, but it, I do believe that it, it, it enhances the piece in general. In terms of this blocking out area, a lot of times when we're doing color applications and things like that, yeah, you know, we want it kind of smooth, but it, it's kind of nice to have um, some sort of process where, I wouldn't say being sloppy, but just applying something that isn't, you know, necessarily the goal to have it, um, you know, some element of precision involved in it, okay? Which is really the you know, a lot of the uh, the techniques that I go after. Um, in stamping, okay. Uh, which isn't the same thing as sloppiness or anything like that. It's just varied, okay. Just for um, a visual variety, and kind of more of a. The end result can have more of a. <laughs> Even though mine might not look like super spontaneous or anything like that, but it, maybe it has a little bit more of spontaneous kind of elements in, you know, within it somewhere. Um, so it doesn't look stiff. All right. All right. So we have something like that. And again, you know what I mean? It's not, there's not this super smooth application of it anywhere. Um, it's varied. And um, looking really bizarre <laughs> if you don't know what's coming. Okay, so let's go like that. This is going to be the lake right here, and this will be the rocks. And uh, let's see, I think I want some uh, trees or something like that behind here. So I'm going to put, like, there's some clouds or mist right in here too. So I'm going to do this down here thick and I'll build it up with that thinner kind of cloud-like see-through um, element of it right above that area. Okay. And also having this kind of thin layer up here, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's knocking back the um, kind of extreme uh, intensity and patterning of the paper. I mean, it's the point of the paper, so it's still there, but um, we're just kind of making it useful for um, scenic stamping here, or just stamping in general. You know, they didn't make this paper for people to stamp imagery on there and to be able to see it really well. You're like cutting out shapes and things like that with this type of paper usually and just kind of making it, you know, those shapes more exciting, but um, having something kind of show up on the front of it was really not, you know, it's not the ideal type of uh, paper for that because of that extreme kind of nature of it. Okay, so see down here, I can still see that color through there kind of extreme, so I, I need to hit this a little bit more. And I, you can do this too, you can heat, uh, spray seal it, and then if it's just too see-through, you can come back and spray seal it again, but I'm going to be hitting it with a workable fixative and uh, locking down what I've done right here. And it's it's going to kind of diffuse out some of this other super hot um, patterning on here to some extent. It won't be quite as shiny and uh, kind of extreme. It'll be a little bit duller looking, like, like you're putting like a, a light mist over it. But for me and my purposes here, um, that should actually help because that's really what I'm trying to achieve here with this white uh, blocking out. Okay, so I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to spray seal it and then um, what I'll do is I'll allow it to dry for a couple minutes and then I'll come back in and I'll see if I need to add some more of the white or if we can just go on with the impressions at this point in time.
Okay, we're back and we have our piece spray sealed. So you can see the difference in uh, not only the area that I've muted out, but um, the areas that were uncovered but are now um, hit with that sealant. Okay, it's a little bit different. Let me see if I show you um difference here. Okay, so let's take a look at this one right here and this piece right here. So you can see, now naturally this place is going to look different, but see this up here, how it's different, okay? But again, I, I'm kind of going for that because it'll, it makes it a little bit more workable, you know, kind of the more treatment uh, you give it. Okay, now what I was thinking of, seeing if this is spray sealed enough, I'm gonna hit it again with some more sealant, but um, I was thinking about using the stays on, okay, and stamping it over that, but I think I'm gonna go with the Black Brilliance ink. It's just thicker than um, a solvent ink, and it's another pigment ink, and I think it's going to give me a little bit more of a, I don't know, kind of a hefty impression on top of that. It's, I think it'll be thicker, okay? So let's give that a shot here, and let's see how that looks. I'm, you know, I have, I don't have any doubt that it's going to stamp on top of here, but let's just see um, what the quality of impressions are, okay? All right, so Brolin's black. And, and then the Brilliance Black will be just fine with the, um, this is boulders with lichen, by the way. Um, this will be just fine with the um, alcohol pens that I'm going to apply over the top of it, okay, um, to color these. <laughs> let's, let's see how it goes. Uh, the, the spray sealant will have to do its trick um, with... Um, the, the sealing portion of it, okay. Um, alcohol and the water in this ink won't mix, but if this is just sitting right on top of the surface and not soaking into the page, locking it down, then uh, it would be like moving ink around just on the surface, squishing it around, where alcohol is not, you know, dissolving it, but, um, but it will push it around a bit uh, without spray sealing, okay. Okay, that was kind of a lighter impression right there, so we'll have to address that when we get to our coloring on here. All right. So we have a rock structuring down here. I'm going to plant something in there, trees or something like that. Um, that might be done with the stays on ink after, after I color this. I was thinking about, if, do I do it now or later? I think, I think later. Okay, so that's the, uh, the bowlers with like, and now we're going to hit it with our autumn bank uh, left here. It's really hot here in uh, Southern California again. It's not up in the 90s or anything like that, but it seems like it's really humid. So if it looks like I'm sweating, I am, but not from um, nerves or anything like that. <laughs> okay, I need a little bit more ink on this. Now, ideally, what I'd want to do with this image is stamp it out with some color. I'd color it in if I was stamping on a white piece of paper. But I don't have a bunch of different colors of Brilliance um, inks. Okay, so I'm just going to do it with black. And then I'll depend on things like um, the acrylic paint pens and alcohol pens to give this piece um, a lot of color. Okay. I want there to be a lot of shimmering color in this piece. Um, 
you know, in addition to the colors that are already uh, apparent in the paper itself. All right, and we're going to use this one again. So that's Autumn Bank left. This is Autumn Brook right here. And then we'll use the Autumn Bank again on the other side. There's an Autumn Bank right, but that's if you use it with Autumn Bank left, not so much with the uh, Autumn Brook. Although you could use this like this if you wanted to, but it really doesn't match up like that too much or like this, okay? Overlap a good, I don't know, like a half inch, quarter inch or so. Stand up when you're uh, stamping large stamps. Have plenty of cushioning underneath your uh, stamp as well. Okay, now you see how this matches up like that. There's this right here. How that matches up like that. And over here, that matches up like this. So you, you could stamp a five foot, you know, autumn, autumn, uh, Uh, shoreline, if you wanted to. So I, I think it's looking pretty good so far. And again, about quarter inch, half inch overlapping uh, this side right here, okay? Don't try to match it up like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, the whole my designs are designed where overlapping is the entire process, okay? So you don't have to do um, careful uh, positioning. The people that try to position it too carefully, they get gaps in between. They say, oh my god, it's so hard to line things up. But it's not lining things up, it's overlapping your designs. So you want things to merge with each other. And there's a good, like I said, quarter inch, half inch type of uh, leeway that I design into my stamps on both sides and on the top and bottom if you're going to be, you know, other things up here and down here. Now sometimes, yeah, yeah you might need to mask a little bit, but uh, for the most part you want overlapping. The masking is when you have like, you know, like a lighthouse and there's like a definitive edge or something like that that you have to uh, kind of work around. But usually I have trees and I have um, the transition zones um, built into the design so you don't have to uh, really think about that. So much more, get real free with your applications of uh, imagery. All right, so there we go with that. Um, let's go ahead and add in our tiny rock small at this point in time. I was thinking about, do I add that in after I add in some colors right now? Maybe a little both, okay? So this is um, just a little textural stamp, okay? <laughs> it's kind of interesting how sometimes the like the smallest of stamps can be kind of the most um, useful, but it kind of makes sense though, doesn't it? That something kind of very generic and just a pattern could be the most universally applicable, um, potentially, um, like a cloud or something like that too. You know, you can have a cloud in any uh, type of setting that you want and it's not specific to any, you know, actual location. And uh, same thing with things like textures. Okay, so uh, maybe if you can see it right around in here and then I'm going around down here. There you go. You can see it down here and right around in here and going around the shoreline right here. So it's kind of unifying the shoreline a little bit. Um, yeah, hopefully you can't, yeah, hopefully it's completely seamless as is, but hopefully a little bit less so uh, by having this common texture running all along here so that it looks like oh, was that one big stamp that someone stamped out? Or is this like all these rocks down here? You know, hopefully uh, someone will think, you know, they can't tell where one image ends and the other one begins, but um, you can do that by your overlapping, but also um, doing things like common patterns throughout like that. 
You could even have this down here in your rocks like this. That's a little bit more texturing. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a lot of color down here, so I don't think it should really matter anyway. But okay, so we have our imagery, and hopefully, you see that behind um, the trees, that little bit of white looks like a little bit of clouds back there. I think we'll kind of define that a little bit more, and then the reflections of the clouds in the sky, hopefully, are reflected down here in the water. It looks like we need to add some more of that. So I, I don't just do the white in the back. We usually do our coloring and things like that, and then we add a little bit more white over the top of it so that it envelops our imagery, or it sandwiches it between white in the background and white in the foreground like that, so it kind of goes full circle. But we need to um, um, spray seal this. <laughs> I'm hesitant, my, my voice kind of petered out because I was thinking, I wonder if I can add in some, uh, you know, the initial kind of um, toning, in, the vignette kind of shading of this with some additional black ink before I go in and start coloring it because I think that'll give us a little bit of a head start. So I think what I'll do is I'll spray seal this and then I'll add a little bit of that brilliance black in the shadows down. This is all too light right here. I want this to be darker. Uh, not the whole thing, but just little areas in here. And then I'll spray seal it again. I think we'll be ready, ready for our alcohol ink um, applications in there. Okay, so I'll pause once again and go spray seal. All right, I think this is looking pretty decent. That's another layer of spray sealant over the top of this, but look how mellow and um, kind of softer that background looks. Let's compare it to just a raw sheet right now, okay? So it's pushed it back even f further visually, okay? From this super hot surface like that. So, hey, you know, uh, that area in the sky could look like something, yeah, it's a little bit too extreme maybe still, but it's a lot closer to something that could possibly be, you know, those types of effects in the sky. Not that we were trying for any semblance of uh, realism here at all using you know a holographic paper like this but you do see kind of those rainbowy types of uh, effects sometimes within the uh, the clouds you know and I don't know what is it called refraction or something like that oops now I just totally smeared that area right there which means that I didn't spray seal it enough or I just didn't let it dry enough okay but I think I spray sealed it enough to get um, an additional layer of this black down on here just to give us a little bit of a head start uh, enough of a, a layer of black um, without I'm talking about without it kind of smearing around so I think that spray sealant has locked it down enough maybe not over every air probably in that thicker area maybe not enough so uh, I'll just be a little bit careful but I, I applying this it's just kind of applying a real thin layer of black right now and I don't seem to see um, kind of a a dissolving or smearing of the the imagery forms. Okay, now I'm just going like this. I'm not going like this. Um, you know, which could you know potentially uh, you know do some damage here in terms of the forms. But let's get a little bit of a shadow work applied here because this is going to be a lot faster than doing it with just solely. Um, alcohol inks, okay, you know, this, this covers a lot more area, and then I can get that kind of gray tone. So look, see this right here, a little bit light, dark, light, dark like that. I'm always talking about with um, checkerboarding. from over this way. Kind of a vignette where it's darker on the perimeter. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do it. I, maybe I'll try to get a little of this down in this area right here that's, you know, it doesn't have any imagery. And if it doesn't go down 
like really smoothly. Um, I plan on using some other foreground imagery around on the edges anyway, so I don't think I'll need to worry about that. I don't know. Worry's not the right word. I'm never worried about you know, too much of anything, but it, you know, kind of a, an awareness of uh, something that might happen around that in that zone. Okay, so you can see this right here. And again, you don't have to. If it applies a little bit clunky, don't worry about that. Um, which this can do because, and, and again, it's all kind of related to kind of the application rate. Like I really, really thick there and that's a little bit too much. But um, like I said, you, you can do all kinds of things uh, later. But okay, so if it's a little bit too blocky everywhere, just dry out, you know, apply a much drier version of it, okay? Don't have so much black ink on there. All right, see this in the shadows like that now? So I'm kind of making this area in the foreground a little bit heavier. Maybe I applied too much, let me wipe some of it off. Maybe I thought it might be smearing it around a little bit, but I don't think, it, it's not too bad. Yeah, the image still shows up right underneath that. It's kind of an interesting, that little smeared kind of area of black is a little bit different looking than these areas that are just uncoated, you know, at all. I guess because there's just a smear of black on it, maybe, I don't know. I can remove a little bit more like that. Look at those rocks, those look pretty good, I think. Um, let's see. Kind of gives it a, a heavier kind of anchoring bottom weight down here again. All right, let's see. Let's 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 add a little bit of shading over here too. Now this now this application might not really be a kind of useful because I'm just going to do a very small amount of it, but eh. The Stampscapes lab, let's give it a try. So I've applied some of it right there. Eh, it's a little bit heavy handed looking. And let's go from this side as well. So I'm trying to go underneath these trees right here. And I plan to use quite a bit of um, acrylic paint pen work in here too. So. Okay, I'm kind of going underneath these trees. I don't know if you can see it underneath here. I've added this kind of right across in there. So the trees kind of stand out a little bit more up top as far as our lighting goes, okay? So I'm gonna to try to do the same thing right around in here too. So it stands to reason that underneath the canopy of trees, your forest floor area will be a little bit darker throughout there. Okay, and I'm not going to do too much in here because that's a um, an area that goes back at the distance like that, and that's supposed to be um, fall foliage, but right in here, certainly. And this is a really dry version. Actually, there's kind of a wetter version. <laughs> Got to make sure I have the right angle on this uh, cotton ball here. All right, so let's get that um, foundation right there sprayed off, and then we'll start um, applying the first layers of color into the scene. Okay, that is another layer of sealant over the top of this. I hit it with the the workable fixative, but then I hit it again with um, a couple layers of the triple thick, Krylon triple thick, just to make sure that I really lock down the imagery on here. Okay, but you can see that kind of frosted um, effect just on the bare um, paper. But I was thinking it looks kind of more in the spirit of this Recollections holographic paper. Now, not in the patterning. I I'm, I'm still want this paper for the patterning like that, but I mean, doesn't it look like that now? The more muted kind of mellow coloring of that. Now, I think that I think that looks really fantastic for a sky. I don't really think I need to tone it down anymore. 
uh, through the white pigment ink. Now I'm going to do some other effects up there with clouds, but I think that looks, I don't know, very usable in terms of a, of a, of a surface for landscapes. So I don't know. I, I think that, I don't know. I think it takes care of itself. Um, if you spray seal, okay. Just in terms of the overall visual volume to make it I don't know, kind of accessible to us to utilize in scenes, uh, you know, without it, you know, looking too extreme. Now, we might be doing other things to make it, you know, where we want some more of an extreme type of uh, surface, you know, closer to what it looks like in the bare paper. Um, but for me, for most of my purposes, I think that looks pretty good right there and done on a horizontal like that or you can do it vertical like that you can have like a uh, light pillars or something like that coming up now for those ones i might want to leave it a little bit more extreme um you know like northern lights or something of that sort but for something like this with open styles of imagery i think this is working pretty good so um okay so i'm gonna do some initial layers of uh alcohol inks like this i think i'll do just do a really quick live stream uh, just with some initial tones laid down on here, and we'll see how that looks. But anyways, thanks for watching this uh, part one of this uh, creation of this uh, piece right here.